This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. <clears throat> what was it that I was going to say here? I feel like sometimes I listen to the show, you, you just sort of say something and a guest is like, Okay. The guests are usually confused. Yeah. yeah. But it's usually a way I've been living my life that's perfect recently. Well, that's what you, you, know, you don't explain it to the guests. You just say, like, no. I ate a bagel today. <laughs> well, often it's met with what? Well, you know what I've been doing? Here's, you can borrow mine. Yeah, please. On the weekends, make breakfast. <laughs> I've been making breakfast. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Scrambled <laughs> eggs, coffee, yes. toast. Yes. I actually am a big believer, a bug believer in sitting down at the yes. table and having yes. a breakfast. Listen, you, every meal is great when you eat it over the sink, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you. you <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just, you, but you've eaten meals over the sink. Well, I have, of course. And honestly, most of my meals are eaten over the sink because I'm feeding Julian with one hand and feeding myself with the other. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sort of doing a fistful of scrambled eggs towards him, fistful of scrambled eggs. But what Randy is talking about, making bre breakfast is one of my favorite meals, and it's so easy. And you just it feels eggs, very luxurious. Eggs, toast, coffee, maybe yeah. bacon if you're if you're feeling uh, if you exciting. Got the, if you want to yield the splatter. Um, you like, know what I've been doing is brinner sometimes. Oh, yeah. I made pancakes for me and Sarah for dinner. and it Oh, was, pancake dinner is great. You know what's something that I have not done, but a friend showed me a picture of this the other day and I mm -hmm. blew my face off. She was like, I want to make cake. Didn't have any cake mix. But you know what I did have? Pancake mix. <gasps> Whoa. She made pancake mix, put it in a cake dish and put it in the oven and baked no it. No way. She made a big oven pancake? oven pancake. Did it work? Yes. And she was like, and it was cake. And I fucking loved it. You know what I, I have a question about? Yeah. Because I made eggs this morning. Yeah. Didn't have cheese. Had mac and cheese. Boxed. Didn't do it. I didn't do it, but I thought about it. Okay. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 Tiger. Easy. You're talking about making cheese eggs with the max <laughs> dust? Yeah. Honestly, that, that would work. It'd be pretty good. That I honestly, be good. No, I don't, I don't know if it would work well, or not. But, no, but he wouldn't want to use that much dust. The dust is like concentrated and like you just no. want to do a little sprinkle on there, but it'd I be okay. I can taste it. It's but <laughs> are you a craft? No, Annie's. See, Annie's for sure. See, yeah. Annie's, Annie's white is cheddar is good. White yeah. cheddar, now yeah. that we're talking yeah. about it. See, the white cheddar French. sauce would be good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I guess it's French. Gruyere, Asiago. Mm -hmm. Asiago. I feel like the Annie's white cheddar, by the way, mm -hmm. put in a little eggs, rainy. That's, See, that's, that's kind of interesting. I don't know if it would work. I don't know. I can't, I'm, I don't have any responsibility if you do it and it's bad. It's poison. <laughs> <laughs> you do it and it's poison, it's not rainy's fault. <laughs> I'm obviously joined by the Wrecking Ball crew. Ciao. Salut. Okay, so Ray's, Ray's, Ray's either trying to make thrown something off new or she's trying to make something no, new happen. No, she planned it. Oh, I planned it. Do you Ray remember I texted you guys? You said I have something big. <laughs> was, was that it? Limited edition. Salut. Whoa. Okay. Well, the pronunciation could use a little word. Salut. Uh, <laughs> Salut. <laughs> Are you doing Kermit? Salut. Is this French Kermit? This is French Kermit. <laughs> People know me for my French Kermit oppression. <laughs> and this is specifically French Canadian. And salut means bless you. Health. What? I thought it meant hello. I thought. <laughs> I think In it means salut. 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 <laughs> what language do you think that is, Granny? French. French Canadian. Uh. Well, ciao, I thought it was it. <laughs> I thought we were doing Italian with Chow. Well, that is, yeah. 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 So it's, it's French Italian. Yeah. One night only. Salud. Salud. I like that. Instead of Chow. Totally different language. Whoa. Well, we are, we have. International. I have, I have been concerned that we've run into the limits of Chow. That we have really Chow, well, we're Chow out. out. I don't, I disagree. People are clutching their Chow Well, hoodies. people love, and, and by the way, I, if anyone ever screamed Chow at me, like out of a car window, I, it would make my day. Uh, obviously. Yeah. But, at a certain point, it's like, are we just going to repeat the same? You know, is it like, well, you got to like let the that joy you're in. Trying. I like that you're innovating. Let the joy in. Yeah, thank you, Rainy. Chow let, is fun. Chow is fun. I agree. Chow We've, is flirty. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to take Chow away from people. <laughs> I'm not trying to take it away. I'm trying to say, we as, you know, sometimes you don't want to give the audience just what they want. This you know? is the house that Chow built. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the house that Chow built. Yeah. And I'll say this, Will. Mm -hmm. People love Chow and they should. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's applicable. You can use it every day of your life. Now, Salu is Chow's cousin. <laughs> yeah. So we're opening up the doors to the whole family. I'm going to need to see the spelling. In the, uh, we're opening up the S A L U D. Exclamation point. Salu. Salud is a word in Spanish. I just don't know that it is a word in French. Salud me is like what you say when you no. toast in Spanish. No, 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 no. So they might be related. Oh, that's a good point when they cheers. When you, when you toast, I, I studied abroad in Spain. You say salud. So the person who taught me about this was Desiree. So I'm wondering if I should call her. By the and way, huge <laughs> shout out. Huge shout out. Shout out to Desiree. <laughs> yeah. She might be playing rugby. She's but, probably playing rugby, but she is uh, French Canadian. Oh my God. Is that true? Well, okay. Maybe in that <laughs> case. I didn't even know that about my friend Desiree. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that either. I, I think of her as being from Vermont. She's from Vermont, but her parents are from French Canada. She's from Vermont, but she immigrated from French Canada. <laughs> First of all, it's called Quebec. <laughs> All of a sudden, Will knows about Canada. Well, Quebec like is the French Canadian well, province. Will's, gonna, gonna, act like, they Will's gonna act over here. Will's fucking stunting over here, like he act, he knows about Canada. There are separatist groups who wish that it were they were their own country, and it, they're mostly predominantly in Quebec, which is the most French Canadian. Like other Canadian provinces, why do you know so much about? Yeah, do people Quebec? ever tell you you ruin the vibe? <laughs> All the time. Because I feel like over here, we're saying salute. We're saying fun. We're, we're having fun. You come in and you're like, well, actually. Um, yeah. Here's the like, history of Canada. It's like, well, let it flow, baby. No, but here's, here's what I will say. I'm going to take back my criticism because um, if Desiree is actually French Canadian, this could be a slang term that I've heard. Just the way you're saying it sounds like the Spanish cheers. And so maybe I'm more questioning your pronunciation than the meaning of the word. I am concerned that I'm spreading misinformation about the French language. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we don't. We Can't, all Rainy canceled for spreading misinformation about the French. Language. Rainy canceled, and then like the subhead is just hon 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 hon. What is that? what is what the fuck was that? So this online the online that? to represent French laughter, people write h o n space h o n hon 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 and hon 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 hon. Yeah, it maybe <laughs> doesn't translate in in verbally. Like I don't know that I've said it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, exactly. Like that. No, yeah. <laughs> That's French. I want to go. I want to hear uh -huh. French Kermit talk about Miss Piggy. <laughs> oh, Miss Piggy, you are so sweet. You know what I'll say, guys? I am pretty good, uh, Kermit. Honestly. Thank you, thank you. I have been living a lie, and before we get to the calls, it's just important that I debrief it. <gasps> and the light turned off. <laughs> <laughs> that was a new dance. <laughs> I really like. Normally, it. it's a hiking, but I this really is really like sort of a, it's a, a swan. A swan. We well, are doing a starfish. I've been living a lie, and it's time that I come clean about it because I just realized it was true. Wow. When I grew up, I thought that I did something that was common in every American household. I thought this was a common occurrence. Oh, I love stuff like I'm this. I'm so every excited. Every house. And re I realized recently in the last week that I am the not only the only one who did this growing up, I'm the only one who still is doing this every day. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, yeah, everyone is having this. <laughs> and it's that when I grew up, after dinner, oh my God. you always, <laughs> without fail, get a sweet little treat. Oh, dessert. Dessert. Yeah. But I've been talking to people about this, and I was like, well, yeah, when you grow up, you know how you get dessert. Yeah. And they're like, well, no. Not, they're like, well, not every Cookies. night. Not every night. See, Rainy's on the same <laughs> Me and Rainy have the same upbringing. I'm like, yeah, you get, it doesn't have to be a big soiree. Yeah. But you get, at the very least, a little yeah. ice cream or a little cookie. Yes. And I, as an adult in this life, you know, I talk about sweet little treats all the time. Mm -hmm. I am having after dinner ice cream every yeah. night. Yeah, and I think that's healthy. And emotionally, <laughs> oh, that's not, that's emotionally very healthy. important. Yes. No, I used to, okay, there's two stages. You eat dinner, then you say, can I go get dessert? Then you got you bring out the cookies. Yes, two each, two mm -hmm. lose each for each person, yeah. and then after that you say, "May I please be excused?" And then you leave. And then you leave. That's See, the and to me, this was what we did in my home growing up, and <laughs> we had fail. Uh, you know, my, we, we came from, we did all sorts of things. Sometimes it was an Oreo. <laughs> yep. Sometimes it was a little cookie. My mom worked in a bakery for a long time. Sometimes, Ooh. yeah, she made wedding cakes. She was just like a baker at a wedding at, at a bakery that made wedding Loving cakes. Loving this. I feel your your parents live in sort of a children's book. They do. Yeah. Well, my mom made wedding cakes for a long time uh, when my dad was uh, getting his uh, PhD in education, his master's mm. in education, PhD, master's, same thing. Not the same. Ah. PhD seven <laughs> years, master's like two years. I don't know. 
He got his master's <laughs> in education, and then uh, my parents were both school teachers. Mm -hmm. And school, so uh, my mom was working in a bakery making wedding cakes, and she, she would make like a little treat. We'd have a little <gasps> treat. I was talking to a ton of my friends, and I was like, yeah, every, just, you guys have dessert and now every time. And they're like, yeah. no, what do you I'll eat dinner, and then I brush my teeth. No, well, so the reason I am intimately aware that not most people do it is because I used to go over for sleepovers, yeah, and I like, would be like, where's my treat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, like, like I guess dinner. we're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, Rainy. I remember that feeling for me as well, being yeah. like, well, we had dinner, but what <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Well, can I just reward for I don't have, a, I don't have like a unique perspective off on this controversy, offer on this controversy, but I also frequently had dessert. Like my family was also on ice cream and yeah, uh, but it was not every night and it depended on what we had. Were you yeah. pissed? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, because that's the thing. You, the only reason you'd be pissed is because you had the expectation your whole life that it was every night. Well, it's because my dad has a sweet tooth. Yeah, and yeah. my dad was eating dessert every night. Well, we would have dessert yeah. most of the time. And when I say dessert again, I'm, it wasn't always a big no, no, deal. I understand. No, I no, no. We're not talking about elaborate desserts. We're talking about mostly store bought yeah. or a lot of them just sherbet. You ever get the gallon of sherbet? <laughs> <laughs> For like 99 cents, you could get a bite a gallon of fucking orange sherbet. Sometimes it was that. And then it was yeah. like, sometimes it was like a vanilla ice cream from Briars. Yeah. Van the br vanilla Briars was a staple in my household as yes. well. Yeah. Um, you know what I used to do with vanilla Briars? <laughs> Eat it on the heater and melt it. Eat melted ice cream. You were drinking it. Yeah. Soup. Ice cream soup. Sometimes put it in microwave. Kind of gross. Didn't taste that good, but it was it was novel. You were microwaving ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> ice Randy cream is out here innovating. <laughs> Randy's honestly though, I actually do remember microwaving ice cream as a little kid. You ever yeah. microwave peeps? No, no, but I've, oh. I've heard legends. they explode, right? And they explode. Yeah. It's awesome. Sounds cool. I was always doing that as a kid. <laughs> I was making like I was making microwave peeps are um, gross. They are gross, but I love them. You don't like peeps? I love peeps. I love sweet things generally, so you'd think I'd like peeps. I honestly think they're too sweet. They have no other distinguishing flavors. Oh my god. <laughs> Such a vibe just, ruiner. Like you're just you guys, like you guys are just are setting yourself Peeps up. are too sweet. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> but do you love peeps? No, obviously they're too sweet. They're an Easter candy. But like, are you, do you buy today? Like today, 2024, Every Easter time I go to the grocery store, I get. <laughs> <laughs> We cut to you. I go, turkey, cold cuts, raw chicken, peeps. Obviously peeps. Obviously peeps. Vegetables. No, but I just was wowed by the idea that I'm having dessert every single night, mm -hmm. and I still do, and I have a little bowl of ice cream, and I bring it into bed. No, I. Think oh, you're eating it in bed. Oh, I'm eating it in bed. That's rainy. nice. Well, so I'm not a bed eater. That's not for me. Uh, you, as you well, were Well, you saying, live alone, so the whole world is your bed. That's right. Uh, I can eat wherever <laughs> and leave my dish out, and it doesn't matter. So well, like, it matters, I think, emotionally. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Will just molted. His skin came off. <laughs> I... <laughs> No, I don't know. I I, I will say I, I'm very pro dessert. I think having dessert every day is great. Uh, That's what I, do. I don't. My problem as an adult though is that if I buy dessert things that come in bulk, I have a hard time restraining myself from just eating all or most of it in one sitting. Right. And so what I will tend to do is sort of a boomer bus cycle where I will be buying no desserts and then all of a sudden I'll be like, fuck, I gotta get some desserts. And then I'll just be eating a lot of desserts for a while. This is so the, it's uh, very uneven, you no, know? I, I agree with this. Mm -hmm. This is my problem with going to the grocery store hungry. Yeah. You go and you think- I think it's the best to go to the grocery store hungry. I, I It's a double-edged sword because I'm yeah. buying so many groceries that I'm eating almost immediately. Like, I'll get yeah. home and the night yeah. after yeah. a grocery store run, it's a feast. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> look at my bounty. <laughs> I have so many different types of corns and treats. Yeah. Because sometimes I don't buy enough groceries and then I'm going to get some food. I went to the grocery store and I got all the essentials, mm -hmm. and I restrain, and I was like, you know what? Let's just get apples and celeries and stuff like that. <laughs> uh -uh. And I got home, and Sarah was like, "But where's the snacks?" Well, you and guys love that's snacks. That's why she's the people's like, princess. The next day, I went back to the grocery yeah. store, yeah. did a second you had to. snack trip, yeah. And then I was like, "Now we're loaded." You know what pisses yeah. me off, and I, I'll say it: <laughs> having to go to multiple grocery stores because one of them doesn't have like. Yeah. Went to Ralph's yeah. to make a turkey meatball soup recently, mm -hmm. and oh, um, God, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Will! I like almost all food, and that's no not like that. There's something first about of all, it's from the New York Times cooking. You huddled <laughs> over a big steaming pot of turkey meatball soup. It's just foul. By to the me. way, first of all, this was pretty good. It's pretty good. 
Uh, what was in it? So you got <laughs> you make the meatball, right? You got you got your ground turkey, you got your feta cheese. You use oats as the binder oats. instead of breadcrumbs. Turkey uh, and oat. Uh, and then you put some oats into the soup as well Whoa. for additional texture. Whoa! There's spinach in there, and there's feta cheese in <laughs> the meatballs. This and a lot of onions. Was it was crazy. Very meal. dill forward. This is a New York Times this cooking is d- a Dill forward oat cake with turkey. If it's you not put, an oat cake. It's oat. It's an oat as a binder for the meatballs. If you put oat in hot water, it's going to turn into oatmeal in the soup. No, it doesn't. Turn, it's not oat. It's it's rolled oats. That's oatmeal. Well, you can make oatmeal <laughs> out of it. It doesn't turn into oatmeal. Hey guys, <laughs> we just want to apologize for Will's outburst. Um, My point is, I didn't come up with this. Is the New York Times is typically a classy. No, it sounds concerned. really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love to have some <laughs> turmeric and dill forward. I will. We got to do. Maybe that's the next coffee pot. <laughs> the next coffee pot is we get stoned and you make turkey oat soup, <laughs> or just something. Like I make I'll you be a your meal. Soup. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> your you, you, you're my sous chef as I as I make some sort of meal for you, and you don't. It's not maybe to your taste or something. I don't oh know. Wait, so did God. you eat it? Oh yeah, it's great. There are a lot of great duos: bacon and eggs, ketchup and mustard, and of course. You and Shopify dominating the business industry. Shopify, of course, is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling super powered bath bombs or maybe even fun forks that are extra long, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. I'm obviously a business owner, an entrepreneur, and as an entrepreneur, I need business tools that I can count on. I wanna make sure that my payroll and my taxes and the way that I make sales is all covered by things I can trust. And what's great about Shopify is they can scale with you as your trusted business tool. So they'll be with you when you're selling to four people in Nebraska buying your bath bombs. And when a hundred billion people are actually buying your long forks. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash perfect person, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash perfect person now to grow your business. No matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash perfect person. Saving cash is good to have Hi, I'm Miles Bonsignore, and I am a big believer in having cash. And one of the ways that I like to have cash is because I like to save cash. And one of the ways that I do that is by using rocket money. Rockets, money, cha-ching. My main sell for Rocket Money was that I used Rocket Money in the first month. It saved me the amount that it cost to use Rocket Money by reminding me of all the stupid subscriptions I forgot that I was still paying for. Rocket Money found stuff that I didn't even remember I was paying for and said, hey, by the way, We're gonna cancel that for you. That's right, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service, I never have to do a bunch of weird emails, Rocket Money just does it for me. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you. That's how good what they do is. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash perfect person. That's rocketmoney.com slash perfect person. Rocketmoney.com slash perfect person. Um, okay, well, we got to get to the phone lines. Uh, <laughs> we simply have to get in the phone. We simply have to get to the phone lines. And if you want, if you uh, can't get enough of this show, now you can Woo! by joining the Perfect Person Patreon and getting access to bonus episodes uh, every single Friday where I call back people in the show and I do wild, wacky themed episodes where I twist the format and I milk it until it's all fucking good. And those are every Friday. And if you join right now, you there's milk it till it's I all milk fucking it till good. it's all good. Thank you, Will. Uh, and if you join right now, there's like 70 bonus episodes already on the thing. So you can listen to the whole backlog. Anyway, join the Patreon, do all the stuff, and buy the tickets to the live show. Until then, <gasps> WBC, it is time. 
to get into the calls. Hi, Miles. I need your help being more assertive in myself. I am a dog walker slash trainer, and I need to tell people no sometimes that I cannot take them as a client, but I keep on telling them yes, so I need help with that. Okay, thanks. Bye. We need to teach this person how to be a toxic <laughs> dog walker. Okay? I don't know that she has to be toxic. They have been walked over for too long. <laughs> okay? Walked over dog style. Doggy mm-hmm. style. <laughs> <laughs> You, speak on that, Randy. <laughs> That's going on the soundboard. <laughs> Just Randy going, doggy style. Doggy style. <laughs> All right, let's give this person a call back. Hello. Ciao. Salve. No way. <laughs> ciao. Welcome to the sh- big time ciao. Um, I've got the I've got the WBC. Ciao. Yep. Ciao, etc. I've got the WBC here in the studio, and we're going to teach you how to be a toxic dog walker because it sounds like you're being walked all over, literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. So uh, tell me what's going what? on. Um, we need a fake name. It's going to be coming for Rainy. Bouquet. 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 It is an absolute pleasure. Tell us what's good. Okay. So here's the sitch. I am a dog walker, but I get like clients from a trainer I know. And like sometimes his clients will call me and then I'll like pick up the phone like I just did. And then like right away, I'm like, ooh, I do not want to like walk this person's dog. You get a bad vibe from them and you feel like it's going to, their dog's going to be bad. Yeah. I've worked in a lot of service before, like service industry. So I can kind of read when people are going to suck. Yeah. But then I'm like, ooh, I'm like also getting clients from this other person. So I don't want to reflect badly upon them. I am taking too many clients and I don't know how to say no to the nice people. Mm. But then to the rude people, I also want to say no to. Does that make sense? Yeah. I find when you're dealing with rude people, just, lying is actually a really good strategy. Yeah. 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 And if you want, if you're like, oh, you know what just came up is I got my foot broken. It just came up. It just like if you're hey, talking I'm to in the them, ER. or you could just like yeah. just fuck. Especially with client base work, you just be like, "Oh no!" Or <laughs> I'm moved. <laughs> oh no! Oh god, I'm so dumb. Oh, no. But I actually moved. Oh, sorry. Okay, because you shouldn't probably have to make yourself deal with someone that sucks. Yeah, especially yeah. if you don't need the work. I, I yeah. would also say that, like, because obviously dog walking people have specific windows where they want you to come and yeah. it, they don't know what your schedule is like. So the easiest lie, you don't oh, have yeah. to say I broke my foot or any of those things. You could just say, you know, I'm the, the, I'm looking at my planner, even if you don't have one and it, just make up the thing you're looking at. And you just are like, yeah, I actually can't make that time work. I'm so sorry. Uh, and you don't even have to apologize, but like, it, like it, it practice not apologizing, honestly, because, because it sounds like you're like, you're getting walked all over. So you, but, but yeah, all you have to do is say, I can't fit it in. And, uh, you, you know, sorry, I appreciate the referral, but I'm just full of clients right now. Wait, what? Yeah. What's your relationship with your, with the trainer? Yeah. Well, I used to be a server at a restaurant and when I worked there, he was a regular. And then when I moved to being a dog trainer or a dog walker, I, he's giving me his old client. Oh. Are you a dog trainer or a dog walker? Or is it sort of an aspirational thing? You were like dog trainer, oop. Dog walker. Well, I'm I'm currently like taking classes to get my license. I assume that dog training is both more interesting and you make more money. So uh, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And you uh, tell the dogs when to sit, etc. It's a trap. <laughs> well, it's a little more complicated yeah. than that. Yeah, you sort of say, bad dog, good dog. No. <laughs> this dog's just going to sit. This dog's going to shake. Shake is a great little you know. command. Yeah. I feel like kennel is a really big one. <laughs> That one's hard. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just talking about dogs now. But what I will say is like, I, th- I I understand how hard it is to say no to somebody when, especially when you're in a conversation, like somebody calls you out of the blue yeah. and you just want to be accommodating. But like if someone's being a dick, you in no way have to tell them the truth. Just give the white lie of, hey, yeah. my schedule's too busy. I've taken on too many clients recently. You know, I, yeah. Yeah. even if that trainer thinks you're always available for more work, you can just tell that person that you're not. And that person's going to be like, okay, and they're going to go on their day and they're not going to think two shits about it. Whether or not you lied or told the truth. And I said, think two shits. Yeah. I, think I, two shits. <laughs> but you can also be like, I broke my pelvis. <laughs> that seems a little drastic. Well, pelvis will. is a tough one. Pel- I broke you my can't fucking pelvis. Cast. You can't do a cast. Can't do anything. Um, yeah. I just feel like, like I, saying no is, you know, bad for 
two minutes, but then you get a big reward of yeah. not having to deal with that. I think with all client work, you don't need to work with people that you don't care for. Agreed. For almost no reason. You don't even need yeah. to work with people you do care for. <laughs> you don't even need to work. Hashtag don't work. Hashtag no work. No work. Easy for 20 you hour a week. Hashtag no work November. <laughs> <laughs> no, but especially if you're like, I've got the, if the dogs are barking, yeah, then take them for a walk. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say something about, you know, you know, the expression about like my dogs are barking yeah. and somebody takes their shoes off. Exactly. I thought that's where you're going. Mm. That's how I'm feeling. But that's not where you went. <laughs> <laughs> Any last thoughts before we let you go, Bouquet? No, thank you so much for calling. I love that I got the Wrecking Ball crew. Thank you so much. Of course, the love WBC you always has your back. And as always, salut. Salut. I'm not. <laughs> you're not doing it well? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> see, do you see the reaction? Only, okay, only, why? Because, only because you didn't do it with us. No, yeah. that's not why. Only because yeah. you said I'm not saying <laughs> she that. She was thrown <laughs> off. No. We weren't saying our catchphrase. Okay, then. Oh, now he wants to do it. He even said. <laughs> this he, is, re this is reverse engineering. Yeah, because Bouquet, let me just tell you, Will said that Chow might, was like, oh, we've done so Chow so much. And now he wants to do it. I was really excited. Chow. You, I was really excited to hear yeah. Chow. You were excited to hear Chow? Okay, we're going to give you a Chow, okay? Yeah. Three, two, one. Chow! Chow! Will, I just can't. I can't even. Sorry about Will, Bouquet. You have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thank you. All right, bye. You're a dissenter. That was a disaster. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Will is really subversive and cool. I don't think of myself that way. No, Will's such an edge lord. He's like, no, oh, no. I'm like, Will's basically no, a fedora no. wearing incel. <laughs> He's like, oh, um, I'm making my my porridge, my turkey porridge. Okay, first of all, it is He's not a porridge. turkey it porridge is a and soup. scrolling on Reddit and being like, I hate how people perform on social media. <laughs> In almost all ways, though, the modern world is better. So I don't hear to be like social media is ruining everything. No, I do agree with that. Like I think that in every way, life expectancy, yeah, social it's norms, to live et now than at any yeah. other time in the world. But to me, social that's media a, is not one of the really reasons why. That's really uplifting to me. Yeah. No, yeah, I, do, I, like uh, that. I do feel that way. I like that. I'm happy about that. Like, like so, there's more complicated elements of our lives because yeah. we don't just have to be like, all right, my job is I move hay and then I milk the cow and then I go to sleep. But like we have like more shit to do. Like it's a more complicated life for sure, but it is better statistically than any other time better. in history. Yeah. Even yeah. despite horrible atrocities going on in the world, correct. It is still better categorically. Well, than, I mean, I think it's know. fair to say it's better if you're just, you know, born in a country. I mean, like, yeah. yes, the yeah. net worth the yeah. net of the entire I world. Yes, I agree. I, I, I think I think if you just compare just like women's rights. You know, it's yeah, like, that's, oh, it's yeah. a no brainer. Well, but no, yeah. but that really. said, I don't think social media is one of the reasons why it is better to live in the Facebook modern world. Facebook is why, <laughs> actually. Well, I really like modern medicine. Ding. Let's take another. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Miles. So I'm a theater major and one of my theater major friends is actually a narcissist and created a burn book for our class. Um, so how does one deal with that? A burn book for the class, a la Mean wow. Girls. A big book of mean things about every single person in the entire class. That's so funny that I they just watched Mean even... Girls and decided to <laughs> <laughs> They were like, I identify with Regina. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ever asked somebody, what do other people say about in my back? Oh. Because I did that in eighth grade, bad call. Well, really? Yeah. What happened? What, what, what was the- My friend, this is my friend from childhood that I knew she was going to tell me because she just- like that's just how she is. And it was that you like get mad really easily and you like <gasps> overblow things. And so now I think about that all the time. Whenever I'm mad, I'm like, don't, don't overblow it. Don't, don't overblow, overblow it. it. Don't overblow it, Rainy. Like but... in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> that's is, I don't know that I've, I ever asked. I mean, what do people say behind my back? Yeah, uh, what do people Big say? nose. <laughs> they, say that, they say that to my face. You're right. You're it's so I, funny. I'm people right behind now. my back are like, that guy has a big nose. <laughs> Have you, you seen? Do you think that Miles has a big nose? <laughs> it's like, I, yeah. I will say that like there was a time in my life where I think that stuff would have really devastated me. But at this point, I'm like, I have come to a level, I hope, of self-acceptance where like I hope that whatever people are saying about me behind my back is exactly the kind of... It's, I just don't think it could be worse than what I already think about myself. Good for you, man. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear no, it. No, I don't want to hear it either. I don't want to hear people being mean about me. I don't no, want to no, hear it or anything. I, here, to be clear, I'm not saying I want to hear it. I'm just saying that uh, I, I just can't imagine that it's anything that horrible. You know, yeah. like like I endeavor to live my life as publicly and w as honestly as possible. So like whatever people are saying, it's like, yeah, Will's kind of annoying. It's like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Me and my friends actually were just talking about this um, where we were like, uh, 
we were wondering, okay, you know how like when you go on a, a date or something and it's a bad date uh -huh. and you leave and you're like, wow, that date was just like not good. Like mm -hmm. not, the person's not like- Yeah. Um, you don't hate them. They're not evil. Right, right, they're right. They're not Adolfo Hitler. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a pretty funny joke. No. <laughs> they're not evil, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's just that they are- we do not, It's not a match. <laughs> and my question is also when you leave and you're like, whoa, that person was like weird or whatever- and the question was, what do you think those people are? <laughs> okay, first of all, you are very flexible. What are they saying? Like the other group of people? Yes. Mm -hmm. How are they talking about you? And why, how does that, is that different? And we were basically being like, mm -hmm. I think one of the benefits of being in a French group of people, uh, a friend group a of French people, group, a French group, a French <laughs> salute, salute. <laughs> but of people who are like pretty well adjusted was like, oh, I think that even when we're debating like, oh, this person had it was weird or whatever. Mm -hmm. Typically, I think in my circles, I am like, yeah, this person was really getting on my nerves or whatever, but I guess they were just approaching it from this and mm -hmm. maybe they're insecure about this. Yeah. And this was probably what they're attempting. Yeah. And it's like, I think that is typically a, a way that you kind of know that you're in a good circle because no one is actually really mm -hmm. wrong or evil yeah. or like, or they don't consider themselves that way. When people mess up, it's like, oh, maybe they're trying to approach it from this. But uh -huh. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah, because I'm like, usually when I come back from dates like that, it's usually just like, oh, he's kind of, it was like tough to keep the conversation Yeah, going. exactly. That's right. like the biggest complaint. That and I like, have. what did he say? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's my question. I'm right. always like, what? And I'm like, for me, I would imagine that like, I went on a date and it's like, yeah, it was tough to, and they were probably like, yeah, he was way too much. Or whatever, <laughs> like the opposite. Where I'm like, yeah, the conversation did not flow. And she's just like, yeah, this guy, like, it was like pizzazz. Yeah, and I know I've yeah. been that guy. You know, I know that there's been a conversation like, this guy would not shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you that's happened. Like, I guarantee you someone that I've been on a date with in my life has gotten to tell, like, like how was that date that you went on? Oh, this guy just would not shut the fuck up. I hated him so much. <laughs> so oh Jesus, Will. Will. Talking about our friend Will. Will. No, but, but to be clear, like, I, I think that, uh, you know, typically, though, it's, you know, it's better to have someone who is willing to talk. Like, I, I think that what you're saying, Granny, like, there, I've heard this from other women of, like, he went on a date and this guy just would not talk. Like, yeah. like I'm having to do all the work. I'm carrying all the conversational plates and yeah. he's giving me like one word answers. Yeah. And like, I know some people have social anxiety and I'm sympathetic to that, but like you need to be able to have a conversation. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, like, and so the, at least I'm good at that. You know, even if I'm annoying and they don't like me, I, I think all it is is just like, yeah, this guy's harmless and nice. And yeah. I, I didn't even totally hate talking to him, but it just wasn't the right vibe. He for said me. Adolfa Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, that's funny. Hold on. <laughs> Hungriness is actually going to be a factor in my decision. And that's why I'm here to talk to you about factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with a pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meal delivered right to your door. I can personally attest that Factor is delicioso, and also I've got a young baby and I'm a busy man. So it's nice to know that I've got a special little meal that I can just heat up and eat, and it's, by the way, gonna be nutritious as well. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie-smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meal planning even more delish. They got snacks, they got smoothies, and they got more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, yeah, and more. Sound delicious and nutritious and actually yummy. Head to factormeals.com slash perfectperson50 and use code perfectperson50 to get 50% off. That's code perfectperson50 at factormeals.com slash perfectperson50 to get 50% off. Hello. Hello. You called perfect person, and oh. I'm here to call you back with the Wrecking Ball crew. Ciao. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so I am currently at the gym. I need to get to my car. Okay, uh, no problem. We're on the we're on the horn with you. Um, so I'm so sorry. We gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> Let me. I need to inform my friend. We are on a podcast right now today. It's <laughs> my favorite podcast that I listen to. Yeah. And this is a really yeah. big deal. That's Woo! right. Yeah, let's go. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta get out of there. Get out of the gym. We gotta go. <laughs> Bye.
Bye. Thank you. Sorry, beefcakes. It's time to go. We are done on the treadmill. We are done with the weights. We are ready to go out to the car. I cannot believe this. Okay, one second. Hi. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, we saw your problem and we thought, oh, man. This and is thrilling. This yeah. is a thrilling s- a conclusion. And I'm going to need to know a little bit about more about the burn book, more about this person who started yeah. it. And also, what are the burns yeah. that they said about you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. And how did it get okay. discovered? So, um, <laughs> oh, my God. This is such a story. Okay. <laughs> So I'm a theater major, right? She's like to be the majority of the listeners on the show. Can I get a fake name for me and for the burn girl? Absolutely. Uh, Will, fake name for uh, the caller? Ash. 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 And then what is the fake name for the burn book girl? Amale. Ash and Amale. (laughs) Amale. Okay. So, OMG, where do I even start? Um, you're a theater major. She can't do a lot of things. Okay, so Amale, she's also a theater major, but she is in, she is incapable of doing theater. Okay. She's okay, so bad she's at bad. Everything. She's bad. You mean like she's a bad okay, actress, okay, right, or, right. or you mean like she can't like like move stuff or behind the scenes? She, she's not a good actress. She's uh, she's miscast. She's and I she can't honestly, do it. She can't. She can't sing. She can't dance. Right. And she can't act. It sounds like. Okay. Those, right. are the, those are the You're main. Okay, so and she's not like on the crew. She's still a theater major who's no, like no, a performer. No, no, no. She's she's a she's a theater, she's a full on musical theater major. Okay. Um. So, OMG. Okay. So essentially, Amale, whatever her name is, she is physically unable to dance, move, do thing. Also, she can't sing because she has a smoking problem. Right. And she refuses to stop smoking. And if she doesn't stop smoking, she's not going to be able to sing. She's stupid rich. Like, <laughs> like private, oh, no. private jet rich. Clearly, we're so bad at telling stories. I'm so sorry. I'm so flustered. She's rich as fuck. <laughs> she can't dance. <laughs> and she just smokes a pack a day. I got it. Yeah. I know the time. Everybody, everybody knows the time. Oh, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. Right. Have you okay, been there in your musical theater program when there's a rich smoker <laughs> that can't dance? <laughs> but they insist on trying okay. out for every show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll skip to the I'll skip to the burn book situation. So basically, um, Amelie goes up to like one of my closest friends in the in the department, and she's like, "Oh my god, listen, I'm like so pissed off at literally everybody. Like, you don't even know. Like, I'm pissed off at, at all these people. I'm pissed off at Ash. Like, you need to come have lunch with me in my dorm right now, so we can talk about it." And my friend's like, "Well, I'm having lunch with Ash right now, so I'm not going to do that." But she goes later that night and she goes to talk to her and Amelie is freaking like, OMG, Ash is like so fake to everybody. Like all of her niceness is so fake. And she's like, she's faker to you than anybody. And she's like, oh, Ash is only friends with you when you're hanging out with the seniors because me and my friend are like super cool and we hang out with all the seniors. Anyways. um, (laughs) More on that later. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're gonna need we're gonna need to hear more about that in a little bit because no, that sounds pretty cool. No, of course. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> so eventually, Amelie is like, "Oh, and by the way, me and this other dude, they have made a burn book of the theater department, but only our class, only the freshman class." <laughs> And so my friend's like, what the hell? Like, what's in it? And so basically, it's not even, here's the thing. It's, <laughs> it's not even necessarily a burn book in the way that it's a burn book, but she calls it a burn book. And basically, she ranks everybody based off of their talent. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. According to how they did in the week, which is the week- crazy. Wait, so she, she's <laughs> it's maintaining a, it's a, a weekly week- roster? Weekly? <laughs> weekly is like, that's a, that's, that's a lot of writing. Man, she should go live <laughs> right. on Instagram and every week and be like, this week's <laughs> rankings are <laughs> Bethany at number one. And at two, it's Max. <laughs> By the way, this is unbelievable. Okay, got it. So I'm it's unbelievable gonna, that she's talking about this to everyone. She shouldn't be. And me. also, especially like she's talking about it to one of your best friends, right? Yes. No, and she knows that. And this is, here's my theory, right? Is that like, and not to be like tooting my own horn, but me and this girl, we are pretty good at theater. Like not okay. be that. Okay. I I'll, be the, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> You give me, a, show me a healthy belt. We're going to need a self-tape at the end of this. We're going to need a healthy belt from Wicked. <laughs> oh, my popular. 
<laughs> no, but um, I, I just worked out. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. okay. But so you guys think that you're pretty, you're pretty good. At you guys are theater. hot shit. You guys are hot shit. You're the department leads. We're hot shit. We're hot shit. So basically what I think is that she's like basically tearing the both of us down. Cause she's like, I don't know, mm. intimidated by us, but sure. she's tearing us down in different ways. It's like classic. she's talking shit about me and she's like bringing down this other girl with her yeah. trying to like make her think that nobody likes her. Yeah. I mean, she's super manipulative. Super narcissistic. Maybe a clinical narcissist. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we're psych. We're not psych majors. We're theater majors, right, girls? <laughs> right. No, right. So, yeah. okay. Well, first of all, I just need to do some due diligence here. Sure. I want to make sure this is something that I have to do in these situations. I want to make sure you right. guys aren't the bullies of the theater department. I feel no, like I have I to. Hear you. I feel Miles, like I have I to ask you. this. Miles, I hear you and I fully understand this. I need you to understand that this girl has been a freaking plague on this department since day one. Like, <laughs> Look, I know the type, okay? Speaking of burn like books. My friend that I'm yeah. sitting with, my friend that I'm sitting with, she's not even a theater major and she knows because she's had to have like conversations with her. She is just like, she constantly talks about herself mm. and talks shit about everybody else. and complains about how yeah. hard it is to be rich. And it's like, oh <laughs> my God. By the way, it is, it helps your case that she's rich. Yes. Yeah. It helps a lot right. to be you honest. Know. Because if she, if you were like, she's, oh, she's like really struggling yeah. financially and she's a smoker, then I'd be like, okay, this girl, but to be rich and be mean is sort of a double threat. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and it's like, you know, maybe right. being rich fucked her up psychologically. You know, if she's, if, you know, if no, you're yeah. the, it's no, very it's possible. It's definitely yeah. dead. <laughs> no, for sure. Okay, Wait, got it. What play is going on right now in the theater department? Get this, get this. So she's audi <laughs> she <laughs> didn't audition last semester because she was like, oh, I don't want to do it. But then she auditioned this semester and she didn't get cast in anything. Um, but me and my friend that she's like, the, like that she pulled aside to talk shit with, mm -hmm. we both got called back for the lead in the musical. What's the musical? Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay, Belle. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Stockholm whatever. syndrome. Hey, wait, no, hang on. No, you, no, you guys are. Hang on. So you got called back, and you guys are freshmen. Yeah. How, how do the seniors feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> well, the seniors are actually really. Well, there's one senior that's not. That would be like a whole separate call. But like most of the seniors are really nice. We'll have to call you. I'm very supportive. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I got it. Cause, uh, and, and now that we're sort of, we have to do our due diligence here. You guys are freshmen hanging out with seniors. Yeah. Mm. Now I also remember sure. sort of, uh, when I was in school, yeah. the freshmen that hung out with seniors, they were sort of, they became targets for the rest of people in freshman class because you're sort of upcycling in the department. You guys are hanging out with the older kids who have more influence in what's being created, right. et cetera. So tell me about your friendship with the seniors. And is that sort of cool to have? Are you excited about this social <laughs> leap that you're making? It is really cool to have. I'm pumped about it. They're, they're, they're really nice. I think that, well, okay, so here's a, a thing that our department does is like a mentor system. So uh -oh. like the seniors all get a, like a freshman mentee. And so I'm friends with Amelie's mentor, oh. but... But she, but Amelie thinks that her mentor is like her best friend. She's like, OMG, she's mommy. Can never not talk about Can never not talk about her. Calling <laughs> someone mommy is funny. She's mommy. She's mommy. She's, she's, she's mommy. She's baby girl. Name of, that's, the, that's her name in her phone. Amelie has her mentor as mommy in her phone. And it's like, girl, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. wow. And her mentor has been like, OMG, like come sleep over at our apartment. Like let's go clubbing, like that kind mm. of thing. So I'm like, girl. One of us is really friends with her, and one of us is just obsessed with her. <laughs> oh, my Whoa. God. I sound so rude. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, as, as a not theater major, she doesn't sound mean. This is all factual information. You know, so funny. Here right you know what's funny? It is sort of like a... Because I... I I know, I know how these departments work <laughs> because I was in one and there is like what you're saying, like, cause I get the tendency to be like, Oh, we're being mean because there's this like girl who's obsessed with herself. She's talking, whatever she's causing drama, she's causing problems. And you guys are reacting right. to her drama. Now, girls, right. you're not going out of your way to bully this other girl, though, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, Miles, like, she's, she's the one that's shit-talking, and I fully yeah. am just, like, trying to... Okay. I'm trying to, like, 
goes then when she's around. Yeah. I'm not like the kind of person to like <laughs> snarky comments and things like that when she's around. I'm like, I'm kind. Yeah. Like you're doing the right thing. You said you're not, you're not the one to do that. So you shouldn't be doing that. But well, also that's the thing is she's like, She's like, you're like, oh, Ash is so fake because she's like acting mm. nice to my face. But it's like, I, to me, I feel like if I'm not venting my frustrations at her, I'm actually exercising more kindness and more patience yeah. than a normal. Oh yeah, like, that definitely. Is, is normal. No, you're, you're correct. And by the way, this girl is also, she's just threatened at you about you because you're hanging out with the seniors, but, um, <laughs> Uh, and have the lead right. of the musical. And you have the well, no, you, no, no, like you're no, gonna get you got a call back. You, you got a call back. Well, you got a call back. A call but back. still. So, I got or, cast in the ensemble. I'm actually a swing for a silly girl, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> this country is built on the backs of ensemble <laughs> chorus members. That's right. I, and I've always said that. Yes. Well, okay, got it. So, Thank you so much. So here's what I think. Well, first of all, the burn book yeah, situation. Yeah. This girl is, um, I find that with this type of person, I would caution you against sowing more dissent against yes. this person because this person will be their own downfall. 100%. Oh yeah, you don't you don't have to do right. anything. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, She's already failing school. That's the fine. more the more yeah. you talk shit about her, like publicly in theater, the more that her what she's saying it will come to be yeah. a prophecy. Exactly. And yes. if you just let her talk about herself too much, I bet everyone else is like, this person's annoying. What do we uh, know about Into the Woods oh, yeah. Act Two? Yeah, okay. <laughs> And the villains <laughs> find their own downfall. You're really working to get a reference right. in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what wait, do we wait. know about Hamilton Act 2? Okay. <laughs> he dies. Uh, because I, I will also say, true. like, I feel like in college there are these types of people who maybe no one in an apartment really likes, but because this mm -hmm. they, they're going to school there, yeah. you can't, like, you avoid can't exclude them. them or avoid them, and mm -hmm. they're allowed to be as involved as they are going to be, you yeah. know, like... So right. you, you want to find a way to like not have tensions be high and not have it be like, oh, we all hate this person and then they're going to find out behind their back. Like, yeah. it sounds like that's already basically happening. It's also like, let them yeah. let them play their hand because if it's, especially if there's someone that's like feeling a, a jealousy feeling or something towards you guys, you guys just keep mm -hmm. doing what you're doing and you don't need to concern yourself. That's right. With, with her disliking you or whatever. The lion doesn't mm -hmm. concern itself with the opinions of the sheep. Will, that's right. Ooh. That's the first smart thing you've that's said. Like what, that's like what incels say. That's like what incels say. But <laughs> oh, is that true? No, I don't know if they. It's, it's, that's specific. I'm just saying it's like something an incel would say. We'll just put on a fedora. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, and what what did they say? Like, so in the burn book, it was ranking. Did they also say like some criticism about each person or is it just the rankings? It's just the ranking, but they have like, if you were to ask them what their criticism of each person was, they could tell you like, the, okay, so her criticism of me <laughs> yeah. in the burn book, because so she put my friend for singing number one, then herself number two, and then me number three. And she was like, Oh, well, like, Ash is, like, good, but she only sings, like, altoey notes and then belts every once in a while. And I think that I'm better than her, but she's just more confident. <laughs> just wow. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Interesting. It's, yeah, I was yeah. going to ask where she, she puts her own ranking, but it sounds like high. She sounds like above you, but you're still pretty high up there, <laughs> which is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. I think we solved it. <laughs> I think no, we solved it. I think you got it. Yeah, I would say how you deal with this type of person, let them play out their own hand. Yeah. yeah. And uh, okay. yeah, let them do their own thing. And also it's just a, Rainy, you had an experience you talked about on this show at one point of like, you told someone to ta stop talking shit oh, yeah. about you. I did do that. And I think that that's like, you could go about <laughs> it, but it sounds like this person doesn't have a lot of goodwill in the department yeah, anyway. Exactly. Like, yeah. you don't need to confront that's this person true. because yeah. it sounds like everyone else is like, if they didn't make any play and they're older than you and, yeah. and you know, maybe they don't have a lot of friends. Like, honestly, it sounds like this person is, is lonely and insecure. Yeah. And what they're doing yeah. is, they're like, yeah, they're maybe a narcissist but like we all like talking about ourselves to some extent it's like yeah. like it, it's you know i think sometimes there are people in college who everyone's like oh this person's really annoying and it's like yeah but they're 21 like give them give them a chance like be nice yeah <laughs> right you yeah. Know, and you don't uh, have to like again it's always better for this stuff 
to not be on bad will with somebody because it's mm-hmm. going to take up your time. Yeah. And you know what you should be spending your time doing? Yeah. Belting, okay? Belting. Right. Belting <laughs> and running the seams, right. doing the work. Right. But I think that, yeah, like You're often so right. with villains like this, theater villains in yeah. general, it's easy <laughs> to let them take up a lot of your mental space. And if you mm-hmm. get, let them play their, their out their thing, it's just like, oh, they're just like going to do their own thing and they're going to be annoying and they're going to talk shit. Let them uh, burn themselves out, especially because she's, you know, smoking, burn, smoke. I don't know. There's a connection there. Um, That's really my funniest thing you, you guys said is like, and she would be a great singer. She, she's ruining her singing voice. <laughs> she's ruining her pipe. She has yeah. no notes. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that that's got to be our advice. And I'll tell you, leave it all out there on the court. And by court, I mean stage. And I hope you absolutely you. shred the ensemble for Beauty and the Beast. Because <laughs> I will. I'm going to be the best fork there ever was. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate it. And thank you for taking time out of thank your workout you. to give us a call back. <laughs> of course. All right. Take it easy. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Uh, I miss the theater. <laughs> I mean, it, it is really funny to to hear about theater group dynamics. It's just there's something so because it's like so important when you're in college, oh, yeah. and then yeah. you know, it's no, it's like, everything. Like it's- it, it, uh, you know, professionally working in the theater, I think would feel very different. I think the college version of it is like yeah. that is the thing that's familiar to me. In a lot of ways, college theater is like a reality show because you're like you're in class. At least my theater was connected to, or my college was connected to a regional theater, so. Basically, sometimes kids would be lifted up from the classes into professional productions. Yes. Wow. Where they would play in professional productions. So it was like this weird thing where like you're in class with some of these people, yeah. but then also you're sort of auditioning all the time. And you're all sort of competing with each other. Because yeah. that's the other thing about that call, which was great. But I, I it's like part of the rankings and the like, so oh, she's, she's ruining her singing <laughs> voice. All this stuff is like... The, because it's really competitive. Yeah, this, it's really it's, competitive. It sounds yeah. like they're going to a fairly yeah. large school where you know there's yeah. a lot of of productions and there's See, a lot of I competition. It was a tiny school, May, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I can. Tell. I guess it yeah. could be either one. That said, it could be the same level because to me, a giant theater program probably has a ton of competition. Yeah. Right. So maybe you know maybe she gets to be the big fish in a small pond at a smaller theater program. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No, but I think uh, that is true though. Just with any sort of villain that's talking shit, like. No amount of somebody telling lies about you or saying weird stuff yeah. about you will live up to you in real life being awesome. Yep. Like That's com- true. will compete with that. Yeah. yeah. And it's, especially if somebody is already like not, not particularly liked by the institution yeah, right. at large. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it, like, yeah, that person's not going to win. And jealousy in those situations is tough because that's real. Like, oh, it's real. Yeah. Somebody being yeah. like, oh, fuck this person. Like, they are getting all this attention that I want. Yeah. But the problem is, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. If you're yeah. ever feeling jealous and you choose to, like, give into the jealousy and be like, oh, fuck this, like, to hate yeah. the people that you're actually jealous of, it puts you in such a worse position. Yeah. It, the burn book was a bad call. Oh, because bad if the burn book call. hadn't ma- been made and it was just like, oh, yeah, this really annoying person, it's like, but if as soon as you cross the line into like being mean, then all yeah. of a sudden you're the villain. Yeah, Instead the of villain. just being like, yeah, yeah, people are like, you know, I'm struggling or like I'm trying to be cool and like I'm not cool. Then yeah. I feel bad for that person. Yeah, I know. I, exactly. Right. 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 I, she would have been a sympathetic character. Exactly. This rich smoker. Well, I think if she if she was not rich, she'd be more sympathetic just inherently, which is sort of something we covered in the call. Oh, of course. But, but like, there's just something about like you have access to all the wealth in the world. Yeah. And yes, that might there may be a lot of negative things associated with that, but like. I don't know. I, at the same time, I have sympathy for her. But like she's, yeah. a, she talks about herself too I much. Do too. She's, I do too. She doesn't know it's how to interact. Like it's to me, insecurity. I don't know if we're going to full on diagnose clinical narcissism. Like they were happy to do <laughs> for um, Amelie. Yeah. <laughs> I would just say that like, I think that a lot of people are going through a lot at that age. Yeah. And like you, yeah. they're not, you're not a fully formed person at this. You know, you, you become different people through the stages of your life. And yeah. I feel like, a lot of people treat college like everyone here is doing everything that they want to be doing and they're doing it perfectly. And if, if they're being annoying, it's because they're choosing to be that way. Yes, kind of. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think that's true. No, no, no. And once you are, get, yeah. once you get out of college, you start to realize you're like, Oh, this person was actually, I didn't know about what they were yeah. going through. Or whatever. And, oh, totally. You, yeah. Yeah. You not only do I not know what they're going through, but like I met them eight years later yeah. and they're awesome now. Like yeah. they, yeah, they've figured right. something out and like, they're still the same person, but they've changed enough that like the negative qualities I used to see are just no longer there. 
Yeah. Because college is just like you're react. You're just trying to figure out who you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, th and this person has decided I'm a theater person. Theater is the most important thing in the world to me, and I'm I, I'm so obsessive about it that I'm ranking yeah. everyone in class no, like yeah. once a week. Crazy. Like that's so much extra work to do that. I think it's also probably a control thing. Like that person doesn't can't get into the roles that they want. Yes. And so they're like, well, I'll do the roles then. Yes. I'll rank instead of yeah, like, yeah. By the way. It's definitely a way of coping with not getting what you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's also, I find that that's, Anytime, like the biggest problem with villains like this is they yeah. rob you of your time. Oh like, my God, yes. And you, they rob yeah. you of you take, taking a mental space being like, wait, they hate me? Like, why do they hate me? They're not even, and it's, yeah. it's just like none of it Just matters. don't even. It's just yeah. don't even engage it's not because even. they're going to no. take your time away from you and it's going to mm -hmm. uh, distract you from the things that actually matter. By the way, I, when I was in college, I was exclusively talking shit about people who didn't <laughs> like me. To be, to be totally clear. I'm not above yeah. it. Yeah. I'm just at a point now where I'm not doing that as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that sometimes talking shit about a person binds a group together, and but that's not necessarily the healthiest group dynamic. Where like yes. the reason we're friends it is because we all hate this one. The bird book though is like so egregious, right? It's yeah. so dramatic. And it allows you to talk shit in an ethical way. That's, That's right. right. Ethical shit talking <laughs> means you need the villain to sort of do a big jacuse. Yes. And then <laughs> yes. Yes, a big jacuse. Amelie did a big jacuse. Amelie did a big jacuse. <laughs> We're really saying a lot of French words on this episode. <laughs> this is the French episode. <laughs> the French episode. Francois. I put my hands on us. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, we accent. only took two calls, but we had a lot of laughs. I agree. That's right. I and mean, we have time for one final segment. And it's a segment we like to call Get Real. <sighs> this is a segment where we get real as hell. That's right. Uh, all for the low, low price of free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wow. Yeah. Big, big day rained today. That was exciting. Big day. I actually feel pretty good. I feel oh, great. Yeah. How do you guys feel recently? Well, okay. I finally I cooked a meal again for after only eating takeout for a while, so I'm feeling pretty good. Obviously, it was the turkey recipe that you find disgusting. Oatmeal turkey paste. <laughs> no, no, it's not a paste. Oatmeal turkey. I want to emphasize yeah. there's only a little bit of oats How much? in the soup itself. A cup, a cup. A half cup? No, so you put a quarter cup oats to oh. mix the meatballs, oh. and, and then another half cup of oats in the actual soup. <laughs> So it's a half a cup. Three quarters. But a quarter of them is Three just- Three quarters of a cup is a fucking bowl of oats, Will. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? That's not that much oats. If I was making myself oatmeal, I would put a quarter, three quarters of a cup of oats it, into a bowl. Maybe even less. Maybe <laughs> less. <laughs> a cup. And then you're just guzzling down water, turkey. Oh. <laughs> you said it was dill heavy as well? Dill forward, yes. Oh dill my. and turmeric. I don't like turmeric. Dill. Turmeric dill. And dill. Very uh, yellow. Kind of looks like diarrhea, but tastes good. <laughs> Well, I think we I think we got it. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could get real about something else. No, no, no. We uh <laughs> like, I, know I, think real. Real. I, I think you got it a little too real, actually. <laughs> you, 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 do you think the turkey the turkey soup, the turkey meatball soup is gross to go out? I will show you the pictures from the New York Times app. Oh, I was I thought uh, Hoped to God you were going to say, I could show you the pictures I took of my soup. Oh my God. No, I'm not photographing my meals because let me tell you one thing. You should be. This you is should. a promise. You be for, so you can show the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> this is a history of all the stuff I had before I came in. Can you tell me why my tummy doesn't work? <laughs> is it because I'm eating oats? First of all, the oats are not the problem. The oats added a nice texture to the soup. Man, it's um, the turmeric that's the problem. Staining I used old it turmeric. It, it was fine. Old turmeric. And is that it? So is, is there anything else in the soup? Just turkey meatball? No, there's meatball. more soup. There's, so, okay. Hold on. Let me go through the rest. Do you want to bowl the rest of right now? I just want to know if there's good? any other chunks. Is this fun and entertaining? Is there more chunks in the soup? Like um, the First of all, meatball in a soup is like, it's like matzo ball soup, but with me turkey meatballs with oats in them. Uh, yeah. So let me pull this you up like you're here. You're talking about a binding agent. Turkey sticks together. <laughs> well, yeah. it's turkey. Okay. Let me <laughs> raw turkey sticks together. I, I well. feel like you guys are attacking the New York times specifically. And I just, some might be suspicious of the rolled oats called for in this recipe, but used in place of bread comes, they help create a light and tender chicken meatball, but you can also do turkey. <laughs> so you, you went off, you, you went off menu. Chicken you sub chicken for turkey. It says, or 
Turkey is a much fattier meat. <laughs> what well, tastes better? A half cup more is simmered in the broth, which thickens it and provides a pleasant texture. I don't want to hear anymore. Oh. I don't the the anymore. meatballs made with ground chicken, feta, and fresh dill swim in lemony, spinach-filled broth that's comforting and light, perfect for lunch or dinner. I gotta Ugh. be honest, Will. This is a this is an ick for me. <laughs> He's a 10, but he makes turkey dill <laughs> stew. I think it's good that I made a meal. <laughs> That's going to the soundboard. I think it's good that I made a meal. Um, holy shit, gang. Well, uh, we goddamn did it. Uh, and I, I obviously appreciate you having you on the show. Uh, Will, what are you working on? What can people find? Uh, obviously, I am uh, back in the lab working on my next big post, and it's coming out June one, I believe. If I think coming up kind of soon. Wow, kind of soon. It's Feb. Yeah. It's, it's Feb. Feb. Do you have an idea as a creative lock? I have a an idea. <laughs> See, I'm Will, still I working think you're on the overthinking idea. this. What well, you have to do have. <laughs> is just photo of you at Echo Park. <laughs> By the way, that's, that's not it. bad. <laughs> it's just me around <laughs> walking around Echo Park Lake and be like. Hey, honestly, yeah, you in the swan boats. Ooh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty funny. good on a long lens. <laughs> me alone, me by myself in a swan boat <laughs> going in a circle. <laughs> that is pretty funny. A video that might be funnier than what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Will's big post. Maybe we start an email list. You can sign up for Will's big post. <laughs> oh, my God. I should. I mean, why? To, to direct people to my Instagram? <laughs> Why? You just email them an Instagram link. Um, um, but yeah, you can follow me at W Whitworth for that big post. I, I may post before June 1, but if I don't, you'll see it. A bonus, the next bonus one is coming post? June 1. Possible bonus post coming soon. Bonus con. Rainy, what's good lately? Um. Well, what's good recently? I'm trying to think if I had a soup. <laughs> um. You can find me at It's Raining Toll on Instagram and Rainy Toll on Tick. Tick. And obviously, you can find me at Miles Bond for all the good, good. Uh, everyone, thanks for listening. And just remember that if you have a problem that's so big that you can't even freaking figure it out, perfection is only a call away. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>